Hey Freaks, it's JJ, and today I'm going to be explaining the story behind Karak Angren's War Corpses Sink Forever. So, I mean, I don't really feel like I need to do this video just because, um, you know, all the lyrics are very descriptive and they're very straightforward and easy to understand. So if you want to know the story, all you have to really do is just read the lyrics. Um, but I'm doing this because it was... It was suggested to me and I had never heard of the band Karak Angren before and then I started listening to them and I just fell in love with them. So I'm really excited to do this and if maybe you haven't heard of Karak Angren, maybe this will inspire you to go give them a listen and share with your friends. So, so War Corpses Sing Forever pretty much means uh, the trenches of war. So this uh, story kind of takes place through a whole bunch of different um, war scenarios and war stories and battlefields and things like that. Um, so we start off with an ominous recording. This is where uh, the protagonist of our story is ordered to shoot and execute uh, seven prisoners. And these seven prisoners are lined up, tied to these stakes, and he pulls out his gun. And you can hear the shots ringing out on the track, and he shoots them, but somehow the bullets aren't able to penetrate these seven prisoners. And they just stare back at him with these evil, with these evil smiles and these demon eyes. And then he is then transported to experience seven different visions from these seven different prisoners. And so the first vision uh, is track two and that is lingering in an imprint haunting. This takes place either probably either the Vietnam War or the Korean War. This private is running through the trenches of this battlefield and um, he finds his friend who's been shot down. His friend calls to him and begs him to please put him out of his misery. Um, please kill him. And so he's about to pull the trigger but he realizes he just can't do it. You know, it's his best friend and he just can't bring himself to kill him. So in the amount of time that it takes him to hesitate on pulling the trigger, his friend is then captured by the enemy and he's dragged off. And as he's getting dragged off, he curses his friend um, for not killing him because now he's going to have to go experience torture and be a prisoner of war. And so he curses him and says that he will meet him in hell. So later the soldier steps on the landmine and he dies. And then he is then uh, taken to hell where he is condemned to live the moment of not killing his friend and putting him out of his misery over and over again. Um, the moment of hesitation where he could have just pulled the trigger. Instead, his friend had to survive torture and years of torment. Then we move on to track three, which is the second vision that our protagonist encounters. And I'm going to butcher the name of this, I'm sorry. Bit to tet mik? I don't know. Sorry. It's German, which means please kill me. And this is about a soldier who tries to kill himself multiple times. The first time he tries to kill himself, he just pulls out his gun and he's about to shoot himself, but then his friend interrupts him, so he puts his gun away and saves it for the next day. The next day he goes out and finds a farm and a barn and he climbs up and tries to hang himself in this barn. But the right, but at the last second he's about to hang himself, the farmer comes in and saves him. And he is so upset that he's not able to carry out um, his suicide that he ends up stabbing and killing that farmer to death. And then the third day he goes out onto the battlefield during a firefight, you know, just expecting to catch a bunch of bullets that will finally put him out of his misery. Um, instead, his best friend ends up saving him from getting shot, and his best friend dies. And so he's kind of effective in having caused his best friend's death. And now he's super desperate to kill himself, and so he pulls out his gun, just sticks it in his mouth. But right when he's about to pull the trigger, he gets shot in the back twice, and that knocks the pistol up, and so he just shoots off his face, but he's not able to actually kill himself. And so then he has to live two more years of his life. He's paralyzed from being shot in the back, and he also has his face blown off. And so he spends two years in torment and pain uh, before he ends up dying. So the fourth track and the third vision that we get to is funerary dirge for a violinist. And this takes place um, in the middle of World War II, probably somewhere maybe in the middle of Russia. This army keeps a violinist and they protect him at all costs because his music is just like a form of escapism and his music is the only thing that can cheer them up and bring them out of their misery of this war that they're in the middle of fighting. And so uh, they protect this uh, musician at all costs and they really care for him. He ends up getting fed up by the war and constantly seeing death and tragedy at every turn and he decides to kill himself. And so what he does is he walks into the battlefield in the middle of fighting, pulls out his violin and he plays his last song. Um, the both sides stop and listen to his song, but then what, as soon as he pulls the last uh, string of his bow and finishes his song, both, sh both sides shoot him and kill him. So then the land um, where this battle took place ends up getting haunted by this violinist's soul so they can hear his ghost mourning and or playing his violin. Uh, the fourth vision in the fifth track is Sir John. It's about a uh, surgeon who is trapped in this village after it's just been bombed and he's surrounded by landmines so he can't escape. 
um, he ends up cutting off body parts and eating them to survive. So he ends up killing and eating all of the survivors, um, and then there's no more left. So he ends up starving for 20 days uh, before these soldiers finally come and save him. And as they save him, they realize he's even eaten his own tongue. Right before he dies, they realize he's developed this thirst for human flesh um, after having eaten all these people. <laughs> the sixth track and the fifth vision is uh, Spectral Infantry Battalions. Uh, this is about a ghost battalion that just haunts this battlefield. Um, I'm not sure where it's supposed to take place or when it's supposed to take place. Um, if you have any added information for, uh, for this track, please let me know. The seventh track and the sixth vision is called General Nightmare. It's about this French general who is obsessed with power and conquering, uh, just kind of has this bloodlust for murder and uh, doing things at any cost. And so he is haunted and tortured in his dreams by all the people that he's murdered and all the people that he's wronged, and they come and torment him and torture him during his nightmares. Uh, the eighth track in the seventh vision is Little Hector, What Have You Done? And this is one of my favorite tracks on the album. So it starts off with a nine-year-old kid, Hector, who in school draws a picture of him and his father hanging dead from their attic. And uh, his teacher's like, what the fuck is this? Uh, the kid goes home early and finds a gun and shoots his father while he's sleeping before he goes up to the attic and shoots himself. And then his mother comes home and finds her dead husband and her dead son. And after the funeral, she kills herself by overdosing. Then we come to find out that the house has been haunted, um, which is what drove Hector to do what he did. And so during World War II, the Nazis raided the house and the family that lived there, and um, they raped the women, and then the father they tied up and made him stand on his son's shoulders in the attic and put a noose around his neck. So for as long as the son could stay standing, the father would survive, but it was just a kid, and his strength eventually gave out, and then he ended up being a tool in his father's death. So then he hangs out with the corpses for a few days, mourning over them before he uh, takes his life into his own hands and hangs himself next to his father in the attic. And then we move on to track nine. Uh, these fields are lurking. And uh, this is where we come back to the original protagonist of the story. He wakes up in this field exactly where he left off. He's uh, mentally and physically experienced all these visions. So he's really beat up. Um, he's torn up, bleeding, broken bones and everything. Uh, he looks around and sees that uh, the seven stakes are empty, the prisoners are no longer there, and then the field starts to kind of like close in on him, and then black hail falls from the sky, and so he kind of just tries to crawl away, try and get out. He eventually he crawls until he feels like he's come out of it, um, and then he's able to stand up and he looks around and he's exactly where he was at the beginning of the story, uh, standing before these seven prisoners about to execute them. And then he's forced to relive this over and over again. He's like trapped in this endless cycle, this endless like time loop of having to uh, shoot all these prisoners and then experience these seven horrific visions over and over and over again. Um, yeah, that's that's it. That is uh, Croc Angren's Where Corpses Sink Forever. Really love this track. Um, I'm not a huge fan of black metal, and I mean, I haven't really looked into a whole lot of black metal. I like Bohemoth, but I mean, who doesn't like Bohemoth? Um, and so I'm really excited to look more into some other black metal bands. Um, if you have any more suggestions of further uh, symphonic black metal, which I seem to like, um, let me know in the comments. I can also do an explanation of the other Karak Angren albums, which I've really gotten into recently. Um, also, let me know what other concept albums you want me to explain, and thanks for watching, guys.